What's up, people? Multiplier here, pointing at the viewer and not the screen for a change. Anyway, what is going on in this video? You've probably guessed by the title of the video, it's all about why you need to leave headroom on your masters when you're converting to MP3. This is gonna freak you out, and I'm gonna actually show you why you need to leave one to one and a half dB of headroom. You're thinking, no, oh, you're just joking, you maniac, you don't need that much headroom, but in fact, you do. Isotope have been telling us for years, but we've been going, nah, you don't need that much headroom. But you do, I'm gonna show you right here, right this very now. And it's all using Isotope Ozone 7. So let's get a track that we're mastering first of all. Let's just grab a um, thing I made a while ago. Let's grab this one, why not? It doesn't really matter what track we're grabbing for this, I just picked a random one. And let's pick a random bit of it. Let's grab this bit. So we'll do E or Command E. We will, let's just do two bars. Let's master this. We're not really gonna master it, we're just demonstrating what we need to do. Um, I'm just talking while I'm clicking. So amuse yourselves for the next 10 to 15 seconds. Ozone seven, wait for it to load up. And what we'll do is hide away the browser. And then, right, so we're gonna turn off dynamics, turn off EQ, because we just wanna do some limiting so we can smash it into the ceiling. There you go, let's assume that we did some really careful mastering. It doesn't matter that we haven't for now. So what even is happening? Why do we need to leave headroom? I'm about to explain. So let's just get our gain staging set up so we have no ceiling on the limiter here within Ozone. And we'll set this track level to zero. And then we'll hop into this view, we'll turn on that. And then if you have a look at the master channel now, you should be able to see what's happening. That's pretty crushed, but don't need to go that hard. So you can see right now there is no headroom at all. We've limited it, we've made it really loud, but there's no room between the loudest bit in our track and however loud we can make the music file go. That's what we mean by headroom. It's the difference between the loudest bit in the track and the, all the available space. So why do we need to leave headroom? Well, there's two reasons. When you first of all convert to 16-bit, from basically you work in 32-bit in Ableton, you then convert to 16-bit, and then you do some dithering while you do it. You need a little bit of headroom for that, but more importantly, this is the super important bit that most of you don't know, including me till recently, you need to leave an awful lot of headroom when you convert to MP3, which basically everybody does. Let's be for realsies right now, because if you put it on SoundCloud or anything online, it gets converted to MP3. SoundCloud is 128K MP3, but let's just say you're just sending it to a friend or another DJ, it's still gonna be 320 20k mp3 most of us deal in those so how do we show that we need to leave all this headroom because you're thinking well why do we, we don't need that that's just that's just crazy talk multiplier we don't need one and a half db of headroom that is cray cray in the brain well there is a cool feature of isotope ozone 7 called codec preview codec is a fancy word for basically audio processing computer science -y file stuff i won't get into that if we hit codec and then we turn on the preview of the codec, then what we can do, we can choose between these different codec types. So we'll choose MP3, 320K, because we used to say we're working in 320K MP3, then this will give us a preview of what it will sound like when we convert to 328K, no, 320, I was thinking of 128. This will show you what it sounds like when we convert to 320K MP3. Now, that's all well and good. It will probably still sound the same, but the super, super cool bit of this is it will also show us what happens to the headroom when we convert to MP3. I'm gonna say it again, because that's really important. When we turn on this codec preview, it also shows us what happens to the headroom while we convert, or when we convert to 320K MP3. So that's pretty cool, right? Let's actually show you. So remember before, in fact, you can even see, before we turned on the codec preview when we were just working in our 32-bit WAV Final Master, we had no headroom, but that was all fine. Now look at it. Whoa! Crikey, what's going on there? 1.14. See that, that is nuts. 1.14 of extra headroom we needed, otherwise we're clipping, in which in this case, we're actually just clipping. You're thinking like, say, what? That must be some sort of weird anomaly. It's not, I've tried it with loads of different tracks. As a general rule, most things, if you limit it quite hard, will need at least one dB of headroom, maybe even 1.3, 1.4. So yeah, just set it as 1.4 and then you've got loads of room. That's cray cray, right? Look how much headroom you need. 1.2, say what? That's pretty nuts. So yeah, what are the upshots of this? How do you basically 
avoid the problem where you're clipping your MP3. And what you need to do is just allow for lots of headroom. So you can either pull down the master, which I wouldn't recommend, so don't actually do that. That's a pretty stupid way of doing it. What you actually want to do is use your limiter. Basically every limiter um, on the universe ever has a ceiling parameter, including ozone, including Ableton's limiter, whatever you use. And this ceiling, sometimes called margin, is set in your headroom. So we could pull this down to, let's say, 1.3 dB. And now notice we have 1.3-ish dB of headroom on the master. That means when we convert to MP3, which we just did by that, kind of converted it, Still clipped a little bit, so we would need to then go back into the maximizer, put it down to 1.4. Sweet, and now we know we're not gonna clip. Pretty crazy, right? But that's the general idea. And then, I know what some of you are thinking because this was my first thought. I thought, well, okay, well, if it's, let's say, whenever you convert to MP3, you need about a dB of headroom, then wouldn't just all MP3 converters like understand that and then basically factor that in, reduce the gain one dB and then convert to MP3 and then you're not clipping. Turns out they don't, they just convert to MP3 willy nilly. Um, I was gonna give you actual examples of this, but I'm not going to. You can do this for yourself. If you don't believe me that you do need this much headroom, what I recommend doing, and this is what I did because I didn't believe it at first, is get your master, do all your mastering stuff, or you've probably got a track you can master already, or you've already mastered. Set a ceiling of, I don't know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, which is tends to be the recommended amount of headroom. Now, that is about the right amount of headroom if you're purely going to convert to 16-bit WAV and dither, but if you're doing the MP3, you need more, so just leave it at that still, and you'll still see this happening. Stick it at 0.3 GB of headroom, convert to MP3, and then have a look at the actual waveform for clipping. And you might have to look quite hard, but you will find some examples where the waveform is clipping. And do you know what that means? That means that chances are, whenever you hear a bad MP3 and you're thinking, oh, MP3 is rubbish, I'm gonna only use WAVs, chances are it's just a poorly coded MP3. And in fact, what they should have done is allowed more headroom in the MP3 and then they wouldn't have clipped in the MP3. Because when you get this weird digital clipping, if you don't leave enough headroom, it sounds horrible, it sounds bad quality. So chances are if you convert to MP3 and a track suddenly sounds horrible, which it probably does if you convert, if you stick it up on SoundCloud, there's a good chance that it's purely this clipping that's causing that, so. Pretty cray cray. In fact, no, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually show you an example of clipping just because, or I, I might as well. So what I'm gonna do is very, very, very quickly export this. So I'm gonna set the ceiling at minus 0.3, turn that off and then I'm going to export this very very quick tray quickly you might say if you're speaking French I'm going to show you what these clipping things look like we're back right so I've converted it from mp or to mp3 so I basically took this exact file literally just converted it straight out to mp3 using iTunes which is a uh, generally accepted to be a good mp3 converter encoder whatever you want to call it um where's it gone desktop hit and then we'll drag it out so this is the mp to the three and check this out. So remember, I left 0.3 dB of headroom, which is generally agreed to be the amount of headroom you leave, which it is purely for a WAV, but because we converted to MP3, check this-ish out. So I'm gonna zoom in and try and find some peaks that are in fact clipping. I'm gonna zoom in on them for your eyes only. Look at that. Look at them. Right, you may not believe me that they're clipping, so I'm gonna show you that there are in fact clipping. So if I do the WAV, so I'm dragging out the WAV above it. Uh, then we need to actually zoom, move this, make sure we're not warping. So I'm basically just dragging the WAV above it so we can compare peak for peak exactly what is happening with this dude. So we can drag that point there. Coolies, let's zoom in and I'll show you. Let's hide away the distractions. So I think we were clipping around here. Look at that. Can you see what's going on? Look at, right, I'm gonna do some sort of zoom effect and get the zoom just right. So look at this particular bit here. It's all clipping down at the bottom. Notice how there should be more room for the wave to do its proper wave stuff. There's plenty of room in the WAV, 
pretty much plenty of room in the wav to do its wave stuff, but then it clips right, right down there. That right there is clipping 100% that is clipping 100% and that took all of no time at all to find. Um, there's loads of examples, especially if you have really limited squished bass sounds. There you go, clipping, 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 and so on. Now, that is why we need to leave more than 0.3 dB of headroom when we convert into MP3. Otherwise, I mean, yes, it's subtle. An average person is not going to hear it, but that's what contributes to a sound or a track sounding bad quality. And we don't need to, we don't need that to be the case. We can avoid it. So let's not do clipping, right? And two final things, because this is also important and two, two important final things that people will ask. One of which is super nerdy, super techy. So we'll get that one out of the way. There are different types of MP3 converters and I'm sure some of them are better than others. And I'm sure some may have a feature built in to turn down the game before you convert. But in general, no one does that. They just convert to MP3 and away they go. Also, the codec they use in Ozone 7, I think is the LMAE one or one of the latest LAME ones. Um, I'm no expert, but it's basically one of the newer ones, which is all you need to know. There were some really old MP3 uh, algorithm algorithms, as I call them, um, years ago that weren't very good, but they're all pretty good now. So this is all a legit test we did in Ozone 7. And finally, you're probably thinking, well, if I give myself 1.5 dB of headroom, it, aren't I just losing out on 1.5 dB or say 1 dB of loudness? And I suppose technically, yeah, but especially now with the loudness war being where it is with Spotify normalizing volumes, YouTube I think does as well, all these big platforms normalize for perceived loudness. You don't need to make your tracks super loud anymore. And even if you do, for whatever reason, need to make it absolutely super duper loud, super whooper duper loud, then what you should do, in fact, is control how those peaks are being clipped. So if you did want to have to squish your tracks so hard that you're clipping your peaks, what you want to do instead, instead of letting the MP3 converter just do it with horrible digital distortion, you want to use a limiter um, in like a clip, clipping mode or use a saturator, something else. Do it in processing, control the way in which those tops of the waveforms are being clipped. Don't just let it be horrible sounding digital distortion. And they go, pretty nuts, I would say. Is your mind blown? It should be blown. If your mind isn't blown, then go back and re-blow your mind. Or no, not re-blow, you haven't had your mind blown. If your mind's not blown, start again, absorb the information, and it should be blown by the time the video is complete, because this is pretty, pretty nuts. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I literally I don't know anyone that's leaving 1.5 dB of headroom on their masters right now. So there you have it. Be careful when you convert to MP3. Use all these advice. Use all this advice. Absorb it into your brain. And there you go. That is it. Go forth and multiply.